Hello and welcome back to Metal Machine Shop. This time I'm going to be making a brass string retainer for this fantastic hand-built electric guitar. To get things started I ordered a nice piece of 12 by 12 mm brass square section bar. Because the frets on this guitar are fanned, the sides and the string holes through the string retainer need to be angled accordingly. To help with this I made a cardboard template with the correct angle cut into it. This is a sketch of the part showing the angles and the positions of the string holes. First I'm going to cut off a piece of the brass slightly oversized with the angled ends cut roughly to shape. I'm cutting off the blank using my hacksaw. I'm filing the burrs away ready for holding the part in the machine vise in the milling machine. I'm using a parallel to position the part accurately in the vise for machining. I'm using my fly cutter to machine the first two faces square and parallel to each other. These will be the reference faces. The fly cutter gives a reasonably good surface finish. I machine the front, back and bottom faces square, leaving the part to the correct thickness. At this stage the top face is left rough for machining later. Now I'm fitting a drill chuck so I can get started on drilling the holes for the strings. The first job is to position the mill spindle directly over the front jaw of the machine vise. I've fitted a 6mm bar in the drill chuck and I'm touching this against the front jaw of the vise using a 0.1mm feeler gauge. With the feeler gauge lightly gripped I know that I just need to move the x-axis another 0.1mm to touch the bar against the face of the jaw. With the bar touching the jaw, then lifted above the vise, I advance the axis a further 3mm and then zero the DRO again. At this point the mill spindle is directly above the front jaw of the machine vise. I'm now marking out the centre line of the part using a sharpie pen and a scriber. I'm using my cardboard template to position the part at the correct angle in the vise. To position the spindle above the centre line mark I'm using the sticky pin approach. A blob of blue tack is attached to the spindle and a large pin is pushed into it. With the spindle slowly rotating you can move the pin so that its point is directly aligned with the mill spindle. The x-axis is then moved so that the point of the pin is aligned by eye with the scribed mark. Using the coordinates I've already calculated I'm using the digital readouts to machine the holes in the correct positions on the part. With the first hole positioned I lock the x-axis. Because the top surface of the part is angled, the first job is to machine small flaps using a slot drill. If I didn't do this, the drills would just skid off the part due to the angle and the holes would not end up in the right place. I'm using the DRO to position each flat correctly.
With that done, I can now start off each hole using a centre drill. The string holes can now be drilled. Again, I'm using the DRO to position the drill precisely for each hole. With the string holes drilled, I'm counterboring them 6mm to a short depth to form a recess for the string bobbins. The holes are now complete and they've been positioned to match the radius on the fretboard. The next job is to drill the two threaded holes for the screws that hold the part in place. Again I'm using a sharpie pen so that I can mark the positions clearly using a scriber. The centre line is marked in the underside face of the part. I'm using my calipers to mark the positions of the holes. Before drilling the holes I'm just taking a light skimming cut across the face of the back edge of the part. This time I'm using a sharp 10mm end drill. This does the job in one pass and gives a nice finish. With the position of the screw holes centre marks, I'm drilling them to the required depth using the hand wheel gauge on the drill quill feed. With holes drilled tapping diameter, I'm now using an M4 tap and tapping guide to cut the threads square to the bottom face of the part. Now it's back to the milling machine to roughly mill the ends of the part. I'm still going to leave the part slightly oversized because it will be filed to final size once fitted to the guitar, but it's good to get it close at this point to minimise the amount of filing required later. The final job on the string retainer is to file the radius on the top face. I'm marking this out using a sharpie inscriber. Before I file the radius, I'm machining the part to the correct thickness. 
I touch the end mill onto the top face and zero the z-axis. I've measured the thickness of the part and I know the required thickness, so subtracting one from the other gives the amount of material to be removed. I'm setting the z-axis on the DRO so that I know when I've reached the required depth. I completed the cut in two passes of the end mill. Now it's over to the bench vise to file the radius. I've used a marker so I know which bits I've filed and which bits I haven't, so that I can achieve the correct radius. Firstly the radius is roughed out, and then when I'm close I do some draw filing to get it to a nice finish. With the filing done, I use a piece of wet and dry paper to get an even better finish before the final polishing can be done. The next job is to make the two screws that hold the part to the guitar. I'm making these from brass bar, and I'm using an ER collet chuck to hold the work. The chuck is screwed onto the lathe spindle, then the collet is fitted and the retaining ring screwed on before gripping the brass bar. First I'm turning the part to the correct diameter. To machine the screwed portion up to the shoulder I'm using the carriage multi-stop. This leaves the small diameter the correct length ready for cutting the thread. I'm using a tailstock die holder. I set a slow back gear speed for the spindle and I'm running the lathe under power so the die is drawn onto the work to cut the thread. The screw can now be parted off. To cut the slot I'm using a collet block held in the machine vise. This is a nice, quick and easy way of holding small, fiddly, cylindrical parts like this. The collet is tightened and the screw is held securely. I'm cutting the slot using a slitting saw. The part is now finished and the two screws are done so it's all packed up and shipped over to distant lands ready to be fitted to the guitar. The first job is to cut the rebate in the end of the fingerboard where the string retainer will be fitted. A nice sharp chisel is used to mark out the edges of the cut. This is used as a guide for the saw. The cut is started but not cut to full depth at this point. The depth of cut is marked using a piece of masking tape and the waste material is then cut away.
the part fits nice and flush with the top surface of the fingerboard. The positions of the screw holes can now be marked and that's what those two little pointed pins were for. With the hole positions marked they opened out with an awl and then drilled through. The part can now be screwed in place and the ends filed to size. With that done the part is given a final polish and the job is done. The strings can now be fitted and the guitar is complete and ready for action. The guitar is a handmade Strandberg copy. It has a mahogany body with maple top and an oiled finish. The neck is made from Wenger and the fingerboard is ebony. There is a lace alumitome humbucker in the neck position and a lace deathbucker at the bridge. The bridge is from Mira Guitars. Thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and leave any comments in the section down below.